Good, whatever time of day it is for you. Uh, I am here. Uh, I'm actually going to go through and kind of just take a look at Pirate Nation. They just released their contracts. It is a fully on-chain RPG brought to you by a team hailing from Farmville, uh, Farmville, excuse me, Riot Games, Madden, Epic Games, Zynga. The team is pretty stacked. And so I'm super excited about playing this and the game should be launching any day now. And uh, so what I've decided to do is just kind of, I'm going to walk through some of the contracts and see if I see, you know, highlight if I see anything interesting. They published all the contracts. So what you do is you, you port your pirates. You'll be porting them over to, um, I'll actually bounce over to the docks. You're porting them over to Polygon and you'll be bridging those pirates uh, from Ethereum to Polygon, and that's kind of cool. And so I kind of think of this as um, staking on steroids because you're taking them off of Ethereum and in, into the game environment on Polygon. And the reason that they do this is that it is a fully gasless experience gameplay. And so they're innovating on that. Polygon, first of all, gas is cheaper, but the way they've integrated and explained that integration is that when you go over to the game, you are going to get also some kind of automatically assigned a burner wallet that's associated to you that where they're going to sign all the transactions and handle the gas through this burner wallet. And really, you're just going to have kind of a seamless gameplay, which is really, really exciting to me to think about this. And so when you move them over to the Polygon, they're going to go off of Ethereum and probably going to create a supply crunch, meaning that, you know, think about it. It's very similar to staking. When you do a hard stake of your NFT to another wallet, you're actually transferring that NFT to this other wallet and therefore becomes inaccessible for usually a period of time, depending on what the staking rules are. And as more people want to stake, there becomes a less circulating supply available to be listed for sale, et cetera. And so you're going to, we're going to see something similar. Technically, they will still be in your wallet. They will be on Polygon in your wallet and they will be in the game environment. And the longer you keep them in the game environment, you get uh, different bonuses. So they talk a little bit about, uh, some of those bonuses somewhere. Uh, I don't remember where it is, but the longer you hold them, uh, these gold gold hands they talk about, the longer you hold them, you know, you get different chests. They give you different items that really uh, increase, you know, the value of the gameplay. And so, uh, I'm pretty bullish on this. Uh, these, um, I don't know if you've played any of the Zynga games before, but they're usually highly addictive and they have these different feedback loops that really kind of want to keep you sucked and engaged. And I foresee this happening with this game as well. And therefore, a lot of people are not going to want to sell their pirates. They're going to continue them on this quest journey. Uh, I'm going to pop over to some of the game contracts and uh, let you know what anything I see interesting. So I'm now over in the randomizer contract. And one thing I came across is uh, some constants, which seems very interesting. It gives you a little bit of insight into some things where there are specific like traits, there's generations of pirates. So I suspect that these are kind of the origin pirates and there will be more tokens added than maybe pirates or uh, other types of tokens in the game that actually play. Uh, there's experience and that helps you gain levels, which is natural for an RPG. And then there's also a constant if it's a pirate. So obviously that there are other sorts of tokens, whether it's a pirate or not, it talks about that. Then you have ranks on ships, which could be interesting. I wonder how that's going to go. Uh, name trait is interesting. I wonder if you can actually name your pirate or if it's the talk of the different tokens in the game, as well as description and rarity takes in place. So there is also, it brings into play the dice rolls and the star sign as well as the image trait. So, and then they talk about energy as well. 
It's also a constant of soul bound, meaning whether it can be or cannot be transferred. And I remember them mentioning something about that. When you're in the game, you can't actually transfer it out, even whether when you're on Polygon. And uh, here's another interesting thing. They definitely point out profile is legendary. Sabotage is a one on one and it's their only trait. And so I wonder what's going to happen uh, involved in there, as well as it looks like they really do take into context uh, the various uh, values, you know, human. We have the druids, mages, uh, berserker, crusty. They talk about some robot we know, animal. Huh. Maybe that, that goes into the shark is considered animal, zombie, vampire, ghost. So there, it looks like definitely based on these character types, they're going to have different roles. Uh, they don't seem to distinguish between the, uh, like the, the rainbow yawn one. So I assume that those are as well as human, um, but we don't know. We got to see. It doesn't specifically enumerate. They just give an example in um, inside, you know, the comments here. These are comments right here within it. And she's just setting a constant on there. So facial hair and eyes, interesting. Skin and coat. So they really kind of, cover all of the actual traits. Now, the question is, how do those play inside of the game itself? Well, I wonder if we'll see any indicators. So I'm going to just keep looking through and see what else we stumble upon. One thing uh, I'm noticing in the game registry, they've introduced, they can pause certain contracts. So the, the way this is built is a lot of different contracts. In, the reason instead of making one big contract is contracts when you deploy them on, on a chain are immutable. And so if you're smart, you build a web of contracts and those reference each other. And then what you can do is you can, for example, point one of the contracts to a, a new contract with similar ABI and functionality and fix bugs and upgrades. So it's a really clever way of doing that. And so it looks like they can pause certain contracts and then they have certain states. And then obviously it, I saw somewhere else that they can reassign those. So I just want to bring that up. I think it's a, I think that it's a very smart architecturally the way that they're doing this. Now I'm over into something called the traits provider. And this is just kind of interesting to me. Uh, they have certain behaviors and modifications that they talk about and whether it's a top level property. I don't know really how that, that plays into anything, but that's, it looks like that they're thinking smart about how these traits work in respect to actual game play. And then they point them back to certain addresses, trade IDs. So it looks like it's well thought through. Feeling very good about this. I scroll down a little bit more. Um, I'm seeing right over here. Uh, just logic here to know whether the token has specific traits. They might need to be required for certain quests. Maybe you need a gas mask to, you know, <laughs> sneak into a gaseous area and disarm something. I don't know. I'm just kind of riffing here, but smart way of how they're looking at uh, looking at these traits. Down here, we see information on the locking system tells whether the NFT is locked. That's going to come out into play, obviously. Um, I think you're going to have to be locked in the game for a while, which is once you're even bridged, it's like a further level of staking in, in the sense because you're going to agree, I think, to lock it for a certain amount of time and that will prevent it from being transferred. And then that will, that will be in that state even further on the Polygon chain. So... It's going to get really, really interesting. All right, let's see. What's this, the loot system? That sounds interesting. Um, there's different types of various uh, contract styles for this loot. Grant loot, interesting. Looks like just the framework for the loot. I'm sure we'll find some more different stuff deeper in some of these contracts on, on loot. I am popping over into the, the gold token right now. 
and I'm going to poke around a little bit and let you know what I see here. Stumbled on some basic uh, functionality around here where you can return the balance on the address of this said gold token transfer, basic standard stuff with tokens. I scrolled down and I found gold token, uh, the actual gold token. So this looks like this is the contract dealing with the pirate gold token, which is PGLD. Um, it's interesting. I wonder if there's going to be a liquidity provided on this token or if it's specific to the game. Can we buy and sell PGLD? Uh, there's a way to burn it, obviously, for different in-game functionality. To transfer it, send it, all makes sense. Yeah. Interface for it right there. Game currency. Yeah, this is looking uh looking good so far. Uh, I'm gonna pop over into the next one, the pirate NFT, and see if anything stands out for me. I'm kind of doing a cursory. I'm pausing as I'm going through this. I'm not gonna sit through, I'm not recording this whole thing uh as i go through everything but as i see some things that pop out you know i resume recording and i can just point it out so it just kind of give you an idea of how i'm sort of walking through this like i said this is initial cursory glance uh a little background about me i uh, have a degree in computer science and i used to program and i programmed for over a decade uh, it never really leaves you. I also started doing some learning, some basic solidity for fun. And uh, in a lot of with programming, a lot of things, once you program, it's just really about learning a syntax of, of languages and environments. But a lot is very similar in terms of logic, et cetera. So I can look through these contracts in in uh, <laughs> granted, I, I am not of the skill level to to write this level of detail and this complexity myself, but I can look through it and get a general idea. So I'm just giving you kind of a little bit about my background as I go through this thing. So far, a lot of what I've seen in these contracts, I didn't really touch on it, is really a lot of the, uh, at least in terms of the, the pirate NFT, it's just really like lower level control of how those NFTs fit into the hierarchy of the whole game system. I did see some interesting in the constants files. There's some roles like pause a role, winter role, um, manager, and different kind of roles that give different uh, levels of administration, likely over how you can manage those uh, contractors. So the contracts, uh, it's kind of clever from that sense because it gives different. Um, I assume different like levels of granularity of people to be involved uh, in the game without disrupting, having the ability to fully disrupt it. Um, and then the contracts, I think the contracts themselves have roles as well. Um, including like, I guess, randomizer contract, you, they can swap out how the randomizer works. If, you know, people are gaming it with something on the block, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, this is, this is very, very interesting stuff. And then some of this stuff is redundant across. I'm not sure if this is the same shared across because I, I've noticed several of the names of the contract files within each specific one are duplicated. So that I'm not sure of. I see some stuff right here about what can be bridged. It looks like this is functionality dealing with the bridge right here. Uh, stuff with the game NFT here. Nothing really jumps out. Here's a good one. I stumbled upon pirate NFT uh, dot soul, which is stands for solidity, not actually the soul. <laughs> Uh, some good stuff around here. Fixed max supply of 10,000. Talks about the pirates. So maybe that's the genesis. I don't know if they're adding others. Um, and just really stuff on the constructor. Uh, or initializing traits, excuse me. 
Um, yeah, this is basic stuff. What do we got here? Basic functionality of setting things up. Nothing, nothing super exciting about the gameplay. This is all just hierarchical stuff. Make sure all these pieces fit together. So I popped back. The next thing I'm going to look at is, is the captain system. We got a lot of stuff to look through. Let's look at the captain system and see if anything like jumps out and is exciting there. All right, I came back, I had to scroll down a little bit, and now I see some stuff with the interface and the actual captain system. What do we got here? There's something with uh, timeout in seconds. I assume that uh, it's involved with maybe something with the energy system. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, set a specific captain. I take a logical guess here that you uh, likely set a pirate as a captain in, in later stages, as well as you have your crew. And so that captain probably has some, uh, yep, set captain benefits in guiding the crew. That's my guess right now, based on just even just sort of cursory looking through these contracts. All right, let's keep on moving on. One thing I, I see in the game registry library, they mention, they specifically mention staking. The ES, ERC amount that was staked. Um, so it looks like their concept of locking and et cetera, or maybe even with items involves actually staking. Even it talks about the locking system right down here is the NFT locked. Uh, I just, what I don't think is I think they lock the NFTs. I don't, I don't think they ever actually leave out of your wallet, whether it's on Polygon or the Ethereum chain. Now I'm back to the main menu and let's uh, check out, we are about a third of the way through. Let's go and check out the crafting system. I am now inside looking at the, the crafting system. It involves, it imports several libraries like the traits library, the random library. And so it looks like the, all these take in aspects of crafting. So there's a recipe input, um, probably written in there. What there looks like there's burning of items in the crafting. So you got to burn rum or burn wool or whatever else to actually do it. So there's, there's some, the game system is setting, defining recipes and which are going to be the inputs. And then the loot system, there's a chance percent chance of, uh, of crafting, uh, with some kind of probability of success and you can fail which is interesting as well as you gain XP on success, which is kind of cool. And then there's also even a concept of maximum allowed completions. Really interesting. And then there's a crab, the, the status, obviously, uh, it's either in progress or completed and also an undefined. Quite interesting. Let's you know when the craft is complete. This is how they set the ref recipe definition and fallbacks in case the all the information is not specified properly. And this is done by looks like by the manager role. Like obviously we're not setting the recipes. This is part of the game system and let's see this is actually this is important this is actually the function of the crafting this is the logic that's doing it's grabbing the player account it's checking the recipe it's making sure you have the right uh parameters to craft uh it's also seeing what else is being craft just logic here making sure token types are matching this right contract 
dealing with the game registry, you know, pretty hefty fallback logic to make sure things are right, right, correct. Uh, I think there's a lock when you're in the middle of crafting stuff. You burn items while to, to craft. Yeah, it looks fairly robust. Not sure what this random words thing is about. Yeah. Yeah. I am then once again back at the energy system. I'm going to go over and check a look at that next. So I scrolled down, I'm, I'm at the energy system. Um, I've noticed there seems to be a lot of the duplication and I don't know if that's a reference of if some of these contracts are duplicated across the various ones or they just are included as reference. This is where my solidity knowledge is a little bit uh, limited because I see a lot of duplication. Exactly not sure architecturally how that is done. I probably will learn at some later point uh, so I scroll down to the actual name that matches, for example. So I'm I'm in the uh, energy system. So I scroll down to the energy system dot solidity file dot soul file. So there's a certain amount of max energy per level, as well as the time it takes. I remember in the game they were saying, you know, this energy goes up and down, typical to these type of games. And I believe your energy can replenish about every ten hours. It was mentioned, but Obviously, I think that's a function of a concept they can adjust through gameplay uh, based on how, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're starting off as a beta game, so we're going to learn and it's going to change. Uh, some stuff is let you know when you emit energy, notice emitted when you've spent energy. Uh, and it, I, I guess energy is for everything, for crafting, what you can do, the amount of moves you can do within the game, maybe moving around. Um, this is just more stuff about, uh, there's milestones, amount of energy needed to spend. This is a function on spending energy, which it takes in a, the contract, the token ID and the amount of energy to actually spend it. And, uh, yeah, this just obviously just returns the energy for a specific contract and token ID. Makes sense. Uh, stuff to do with the regeneration of the energy. It's just the interface. I stands for interface. This is just basically probably just, just the interface so you know uh, the various constructs. We're going to pop over to game globals. That should be super interesting. Um, global means it's like to the scope of the entire structure or game or whatever. The term global in, in programming means it's like a global variable. So I assume that this has to deal with like global level concepts within the game itself. So I'm going to poke around and we'll see what we see. I'm at the globals. Let's see what we see here. Looks like just a lot of mappings. Uh, I don't see much that helps me inform of like actual, you know, game details or alpha. It looks very architectural about they can create and assign and map globals within the game. It doesn't look like there's a lot of fixed data that just, uh, you know, helps inform us. It almost looks like they, they can plug these values in and change game logic. Like, look, see, there's a game logic contract role. So making it really flexible. I mean, they mentioned in the Discord that they're building a game engine and Pirates is really probably just a game that's going to be built off of this, but this, a lot of this can be reused for whatever other game that they might produce in the future. Super interesting. Yep. 
yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it moving. I don't think I see much else that I can talk to you all about. Um, just kind of keep scrolling, see if anything jumps out at me. No, let's keep it moving. All right, let's check out the holding system next. I'll just keep it. I won't pause. Let me just scroll all the way down to the holding system, wherever it um, says holding system. There it is. It's got referencing of other Solidity files, the loot. Ah, so this is the thing that grants the user rewards based on how long they've held an NFT. It looks at it in time of seconds. Once the milestone has been unlocked and claimed, logic around that looks pretty straightforward and just some other uh, general logic with the loot system and how to reward it. Once you, you can claim the milestone when things are not paused, when you've reached certain indexes. Basic lot, they just have basic logic functions here that get all milestones for a given to token and account. This is probably just, you know, the game interface can pull this data uh, real time. And uh, since this is a little bit, this is an external function and it's a view, meaning it doesn't modify on the blockchain. This is just basically reading data uh, off blockchain data. A little bit of solidity knowledge there. Uh, yeah, looking, looking pretty good. Let's, uh, let's go over to see if we see anything interesting in the locking system. All right. I'm down at the locking system. It ensures that the locking and unlocking of the tokens cannot be transferred. I don't know how much I'm going to find here. This is probably really low level stuff that just maintains state of whether things are locked and can be moved. So, uh, yeah, it's just good to know this exists. I don't really think we're going to see any kind of like, aha, oh, wow, like in here. So let's see. No, I don't, I'm not seeing anything that looks super, super duper deep alpha. It's just, you know, whether it can be transferred, uh, token data. Yeah, this looks looks like it's all sort of administration around the locking uh, system. Uh, yeah. We all know that they, you can lock stuff and it's built into it. Mm, loot system. Let's see what we find in the loot system. Okay, I'm down at the loot system now. There is some concept of how many loots has been minted, uh, some weights to it, number of mints, total weight. I'm not exactly sure how that plays into it, but it's kind of interesting. Well, we can have discussions around that later. Um, keep scrolling, seeing. All right, logic around the loot is plugged in. This is something I keep seeing. Something mentioned random word. I'm wondering if that's dealing with the randomizer, but it's grant loot with random word. That's and then and it involves a random word. It's interesting. Um, yeah, finish granting loot using randomness from the virtual. I think that stands. Virtual framework, RF, I, VRF. This is VRF. I'm going to actually uh, pause it for a second and Google it. I don't know if this is what I mean by here, but VR, VRF, virtual routing and forwarding. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, sounds like that could be applicable here. Mm -hmm. This validator reverts it, just making sure things are doing correctly if it's, it has any errors 
validating the loot, just logic around there. This is dealing with picking random loot from a loot table. Okay, so the word is whatever is used as a randomization. I'm assuming it's like actually not a word word, but a, you know, a ASCII or whatever form, just like an address or something else that uh, is just used for randomization. Uh, there's some weighting in there. I don't know if that like gives weighting, you get better chances with certain traits or anything else, but that it's very interesting. Um, I don't see any like, it's, I don't see anything like, oh, super informing because a lot of it seems to be obfuscated out into the concept of the game, uh, logic. Is there... I am, let's go to the quest system. I don't know if I'm going to go through all of these other, the ones toward the end, look, I'll probably still poke through them. And if I see anything uh, interesting, it'll be in this video, but I don't know if I'm going to handle every single one of these final contracts in this video, because looking at the names, once we get behind, beyond like the traits provider, uh, yeah, well, eh, whatever. We'll just keep it going. Let's see. Let's see what we see. Ooh, that took a minute of scrolling. It's 30, 35, 30 out of 37. Uh, it looks like I said before, you're scrolling past a lot of the interfaces of the other contracts to reference it. And this is actually a non-interface. This is the quest system. Let's see what we see in the quest system. If it can help inform us any kind of alpha. There's a chance of losing a consumable item when you're doing a chest, so a quest. So quest probabilities are not 100%. You can there's success probabilities. You can fail and still lose, burn your item in the process, which is interesting. Uh, a way of setting up the quest definition here, uh, the structure that actually defines what a you know what kind of loot, what inputs. How much cooldowns of quests obviously probably will take different levels of energy and parameters. There's different progress and progress. It's actually a generating results one. That's interesting. So maybe that's to do with some on-chain processing if gas is high or something. I, I don't know. I just find that interesting that there's a generating results quest status. Uh, mappings of here. event when the quest is completed. You have to have proper tokens to do specific types of quests. So there's an invalid input token type and some other logic just to make sure it's the right. Uh, and just basic logic functions, you know, getting the quest data for the right quest ID. Um, okay. For example, setting quest enabled, you can only do it with the manager role. That obviously makes sense. Managers can set the quest, whoever those people are. We won't have those manager roles clearly. It's the start quest function, whether the quest is available to do. Then here's all the, you know, the start time, et cetera, all the logic around getting that that quest started. Anything interesting here, I see. Not game currency. Check the token type to share that the input matches with the quest. Yeah, it's just logic around and making sure it's that there's not going to be errors and the right input data is checked and fall back. Makes sense. Just internal functions here completes the quest. Handles account data, et cetera. Checks if quest is available. All makes sense. Quest success handler. Grant loot with random reward. It's granting that loot randomly. Unlock quest inputs. Okay. It unlocks the inputs, grants the XP, and potentially burns stuff that's needed. Grant XP on success. Yeah. 
there's a chance to determine if the input should be returned to the user. Sometimes you, maybe you can fail and still get stuff back. It's not always burned, but then it probability of it actually being burned. Interesting. So for I, I, I see that you have inputs that go in quest. Maybe some of them are burned automatically. Some have a percent chance of burned. It all really depends on the game logic. But that's interesting. Yeah. So like, for example, maybe some rums burned, but obviously like a ship's not burned, but maybe your ship can be burned or destroyed. Who knows? Pop into the requirement system. All right. Found this bad boy, 19 of 19, the requirement system. I don't know what we're gonna find in here that's super interesting. Looks like very low level management of, of, you know, if certain dresses have certain requirements and whether maybe logic here, whether they, they have, I don't know if this is dealing with roles or, or what, uh, it's not too exciting. We're just going to move on here. I'm going to go over to the token action system. Let's see what we got here. All right, I found the token action system. Gives the tokens ability to perform actions. Okay. Whether or not an action is uh, enabled on a specific token. I wonder what kind of actions they are, whether they can do quests, whether they can be burned. I'm not exactly sure. but you can see the types of actions. It's very, very low level management. Perform game action. Get the action contract. So there's an action contract. I gotta see if I figure out where that action contract is and whether it does a game action. Uh, I'm gonna have to hook around. I don't know if there is, is there a game action contract? I didn't see that. Probably gonna have to search through those because I'm just really going down to the names that match the things. I didn't really see the game action con. The go back here. That was the action system. Maybe I'll find the action game action. Let me just scroll a little bit more and see if I can see it. it pops out a lot of the interface. I don't see it in here. Maybe I missed it. Didn't see it. Uh, I'm going to continue on to the to uh, no, the traits provider and kind of poke around there. Got a few more to go. If I see it, I see it. If I don't, oh, well. All right, I found, I found traits provider. It's dealing a lot with the traits. Uh, metadata for each trait and it is expected behavior. So there are certain behaviors that are expected of traits and it maps to those token IDs, traits metadata is change. Interesting, maybe those traits can be updated and how they behave. Yeah, I think they are because I remember something with the traits is like they're gonna be introducing game behavior on those traits and how they work later. So a lot of the traits initially are gonna be cosmetic and then actually transform to, um, you know, actual in-game values. And so, yeah, this is, this is a long file too. It looks like there's a lot of logic around the traits and set the values for those traits in the game. You can batch set them, set several tra traits for a given token. Interesting. Decrements the, tr this is interesting. Decrements the trait for a token by the given amount. So that sounds super interesting. So maybe traits lose their effectiveness and increase their effectiveness. I'm not exactly sure, but that is very, very interesting. The concept of incrementing and decrementing a trait leads me to believe that that traits themselves sort of have energies or values that can be consumed or um, 
consumed or also restored. That's kind of interesting. Huh? That's very interesting. That's an alpha there. It just returns the tray. Let's see what else I see. That's super interesting though. The concept of incrementing and decrementing and these properties. Okay. I'm just scrolling seeing if anything, there's just a lot. Yeah, it converts the traits numeric or string value into printable. So this is give data to return about the trait. Ah, yeah, like I said, I went through this relatively fast, but there, there seems to be some gems in that one. I'm going to pop over to the games tokens URI handler. See that. See what I find there. Yo, as I was recording this on Twitter. I saw it on my phone. The game is live. Beta is live. That is exciting. We're about to shoot. I might let, let's go briz some stuff. Let's briz some stuff. Let's go over. Is the site even up? Is the site being hammered? <laughs> Let's go. All right. Let me change to the right address. I'm not even on the right address. Uh, you guys are seeing my money. I don't got a lot of money. Now on this account, that is. Let's play the game. Bridge pirate. What are you talking about? I have pirates. I have pirates. There it is. I had to refresh. Okay, we are going to bridge some pirates. This is exciting. All right, I am not taking him, not taking her, not taking, I'm taking boom, boom. I guess, how many can I bridge at a time? This is super exciting. Oh, five at a time. Bridge him, bridge him. Is that five? Five out of 30 selected. Approve bridging. Let's go. That's only 91 cents. All right, this is getting exciting. This video got it super exciting. All right, I'm to be honest, I'm not even gonna finish these contracts right now. I'll, I'll do a separate video. Let's just, let's just keep this one rolling. Bridge to Polygon. All right, it's going to cost me $8. Shipping these bad boys over. Actually, let me go to Blur, too. I'm going to go Blur. I'm actually going to delist some stuff. I'm going to my Pirates. Let's see before these things get, get bought up. Yeah, some dumb stuff. Don't judge what's listed. Oh, most of my listing good. All my listing is expired. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is great. Did they? That's interesting. Did they? Why did they expire? I only have one thing listed in my legendary. I'm not bridging that over just in case somebody wants to pay me the high. That's not going over. All right. It says up to 30 minutes. Pirates in transit. Let's see. Is it? Yeah, they're deposit pirates in transit. All right. Let's put some more. Uh, he's going. He's going. He's going, she's going. They need to improve that so I can see all of those. Five selected. Max. Bridge to Polygon. Man, it's been like $40 bridging. Let's go. Yo, this is dummy exciting. <laughs> 
This is exciting. I don't even go to Discord. What's popping in Discord? Yo, let's see. Ten in the bridge. And I'm doing a video too. This is exciting. I got so many things going on. All right. How many are there? Those are all bridging. He's going. He's going. She's not going. He's going. He's going. He's not going. I don't like that. I can't see how many I have selected at a given time. When I scroll down, that interface can be improved. Oh, I only did four. See, I'm seeing that select map. That's that could be improved. Alrighty. In case you know, the reason I'm not bridging everybody is because there is a strong. Okay, well, you can't select over that. That's cool. Just good to know. Getting all my pirates over there. It's 19. Let's see. Because I'm keeping some, I'm keeping some on Ethereum. Uh, I might sell a few. I just want the option. Um, I have 12. I'm going to keep 11 on Ethereum. Keeping these 11 on as potential sales options. Uh, a lot going on. Then we'll, we'll do that. This video is getting exciting. Let's confirm that last dude, rainbow dude, getting all these onto there. So then I'll have 11 left in my wallet. Well, they're all in my wallet technically, but these are getting bridged. All right, this is exciting. All right, everybody. This is this is really cool that this is going on. Uh, let me go back to the game. What was I looking at? Man, I lost con I lost uh, context. I, I, I'll go back and keep looking at this. I want I want to kind of get into the excitement of the energy of the thing. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, there are about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight contracts I did not look at. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll go look at them later. Like I, I, I'm getting into the mix. I just I want to thank everybody for time. Uh, this is super exciting. I'm gonna refresh my bar. I'm curious if it's because it's on Ethereum. Yeah, it's only showing that I have 11 pirates now. These guys are going, they're on the way to the pirate land up to 30 minutes. I'll do another video on gameplay and let you guys know. Thank you very much for spending time with me.